Today we are looking at a case from the second part of the 19th century. So sit back as we go to the USA. Matilda Smith was born in Byram Township, Sussex County, New Jersey, on the 20th of June, 1868. But despite being named Matilda, she was always known as Tilly. She lived with her family in extremely poor circumstances and received little education. Despite this, she grew up to be a pleasant and polite young lady. In 1886, she found employment as a kitchen maid at the Centenary Collegiate Institute in Hackettstown in New Jersey, which was some 50 miles west of New York City. This was a good position for Tilly, as although the work was hard, the Institute provided her with accommodation. There were, however, some strict rules which all employees of the Institute had to abide by, and although they were considered to be for the benefit of the staff, they were not always adhered to. Female employees were allowed out in their free time, but they were all required to have returned by 10pm. Anyone who needed to stay out beyond that hour would have to seek consent from the matron, and if they returned without having received the matron's consent, they'd be refused entry and have to find an alternative place to sleep. Tilly had made arrangements to meet her friends, Annie Van Sickle and sisters Mary and Agnes Wright, on the evening of Thursday the 8th of April 1886. She knew that she would probably not return before 10pm and did not want to ask permission from the matron to be allowed to stay out late. After all, it was a weekday and her request would almost certainly be declined. She decided to ask the janitor if he would be able to let her back into the institute after the permitted hour. His name was James Titus, a somewhat quiet character. He was born in Hackettstown on the 6th of March 1857 and was married with a small child. He had worked at the institute for more than 11 years and was aware of all the strict regulations that were imposed on the staff and it was not the first time that one of the young female employees had asked him for assistance in getting back into the institute after the doors had been locked. He was not allowed to break the rules so told Miss Smith that he could not help her and that she would have to request permission from the matron. However, Tilly did not request permission and after she had finished work on the 8th of April 1886, she left the Institute and made her way unaccompanied to Main Street in Hackettstown, where she had arranged to meet her friends. Together they went to the entertainment hall to see a show. There they met two young gentlemen named Harry Harring and Charles Munich. They both worked as salesmen and were staying in a nearby hotel. When the show ended, the four young ladies walked along Main Street, accompanied by their two new acquaintances. Shortly afterwards, the sisters Mary and Agnes Wright went home, which meant that Tilly and her friend Annie were left in the company of Harry Harring and Charles Munich. Quite a few people were out that night, including a young man named Fred Weedy, who Tilly had previously courted. He was with his friend named Jess Baggett. Tilly and Frank spoke for a short while before she said goodbye to Annie and made her way back to the Institute, accompanied by Charles Munich. The following morning, Friday the 9th of April 1886, a gentleman named Mr John White was out walking his dog very close to the Institute when he made a macabre discovery, the body of a young lady. He immediately contacted the authorities and the body was identified to be Miss Tilly Smith, the young kitchen maid who worked at the Centenary Collegiate Institute. News of this horrifying crime soon spread throughout Hackettstown and people wondered who could have committed such a terrible act? Her body was transferred to the mortuary where Dr. J.S. Cook conducted an autopsy. He discovered that the cause of death had been strangulation. He also revealed that she had been outraged and according to Dr. Cook, by more than one person, the doctor added that she had struggled valiantly to fend off her attacker. The people of Hackettstown were very anxious that the perpetrator or perpetrators were brought to justice and the newspapers were eager to report on any new developments in the investigation. There was dust found on Tilly's dress, which led the police to think that the assault had probably taken place in the barn, which was a short distance from where the body had been found. But why she had been placed in the field, close to the Institute, remained a mystery. There were no signs that she had been dragged, so they presumed that she must have been carried. Harry Harring and Charles Munich were arrested. They had both been seen with Tilly that night, and witnesses confirmed that they had seen Charles Munich walking with her in the direction of the Institute. However, both men 
denied that they had anything to do with the murder of Miss Smith. Charles Munich told the detectives that he had escorted Tilly to the gates of the Institute and that they arrived about 10 minutes past 10, by which time the door had been locked. He told the investigating officers that he had offered to pay for a room for her at the hotel where he was staying, but she told him that that would not be necessary, and instead she bid him good night and walked around the side of the building. The police held the two men for a few days, but witnesses had seen them both drinking at 11 o'clock in the bar at the American Hotel, and this meant that they would not have had enough time to have committed the murder. A $1,000 reward was offered for any information that may lead to finding the person or persons responsible for the terrible crime. The Pickerton Detective Agency was also hired to assist with the investigation. New Jersey Chief Detective Bob Haggerty suspected that the janitor, Mr. James Titus, was responsible for the murder. He was surprised that he had not already been arrested. Detective Haggerty believed that he had opened the door for the young lady on the 8th of April, so she would not get into trouble with the matron. He then propositioned her, and when she rejected his advances, he knocked her down, causing the marks that were found on her face. When she struggled, he strangled her and took her body to the field, where it was found the next morning. Even though there was no evidence to support this, the newspapers sensationalised Detective Haggerty's theory, and the public started to believe that the 29-year-old janitor, James Titus, had brutally ravaged and murdered Miss Tilly Smith, and the people and the press demanded justice. The newspapers also reported that Miss Tilly Smith had been buried in a pauper's grave. One named the New York World began asking for contributions in order that a memorial may be erected to commemorate her. They described it as a monument of virtue to commemorate a brave young lady who died in the defence of her honour. The press then all supported this campaign and with no other suspects, continued with their efforts to persuade the authorities to arrest Mr. James Titus. They wrote that as he looked after the furnace in the basement, this could account for why there was dust on Tilly's clothes when she was found. He was also the person who would have let her in that night. And of course, Detective Haggerty believed he was the person responsible. A witness named Peter Mead came forward and told the police that on the night of the 8th of April, he had spoken to James Titus. He said that he had gone to the basement and that after a brief conversation, Mr. Titus spoke about Miss Smith in a very disrespectful manner, suggesting that she was not a young lady who portrayed the high moral values expected in the late 19th century. Mr. Peter Mead added that although he had planned to study late into the night, Mr. Titus had said that he should wait as Miss Smith would soon be returning from her night out. The police believed Mr. Mead and they did not investigate him to try and find out his motive for coming forwards. If they had, they would have discovered that he was a somewhat strange and arrogant character. He was a student at the Institute, but insisted that everyone referred to him as Reverend. He earned money by assisting Mr. Titus with his janitorial duties for a few hours each day. Following the brutal campaign in the press and the circumstantial evidence gathered by the police, on the 29th of April 1886, Mr. James Titus was arrested and charged with the assault and murder of Miss Tilly Smith. The trial began on the 28th of September 1886 in Belvedere, New Jersey, a town about 15 miles from where the crime took place. The courtroom was full, with many people gathered outside. Reporters were poised to write down everything that was said, and it seemed that the whole country was keen to read about the events that were unfolding. Many witnesses were called, but it was Peter Mead who provided the most sensational testimony. Once the reward money had been offered, he had started to take notes on apparent conversations that he had had with the defendant whilst he was working in the basement of the Institute. He was an impressive witness and told the court that one night following the incident, they were together in the basement for most of the evening, but Mr. Titus was agitated and kept walking up and down the corridors. Mr. Mead said that he seemed more reserved than usual, but then he suddenly stood up and said, well, they may arrest me and they may hang me, but they can't destroy my soul. The defence had a difficult task, as the press had been particularly hostile towards Mr. James Titus, both before and after he had been arrested. They had written that he had acted improperly towards other young ladies who worked at the Institute, 
and this was mentioned by the prosecution. The prosecution, however, were unable to bring any witnesses who could confirm this. The defence described Mr James Titus as someone who had always enjoyed an excellent reputation in the community, despite being a quiet and reserved character. They also outlined the other inconsistencies in the case. The prosecution had insisted that Tilly Smith had been murdered between 10.15 and 10.30 on the night of Thursday the 8th of April, but the doctors who carried out the post-mortem believed that the brutal crime had occurred at least two hours later, at some time in the early hours of the 9th of April. He knew every inch of the institute and the grounds, so if he had committed the crime, surely he would not just have left the body in a field. There were two cesspools covered with flagstones. It would have been very easy to conceal a body there, which may not have been discovered for months, even years. Miss Tilly Smith had not been working at the Institute for very long, and she was known to be a temperamental young lady. Her parents lived apart in different areas of the country, so if she had suddenly gone missing, the matron would probably have presumed that she did not like the strict rules imposed on the staff, and may not have attempted to find out her whereabouts. The defendant had also been ill at the time, and had not wanted to leave the warmth of the basements. The prosecution told the court that Tilly was a charming and polite young lady who had been brought up in very poor circumstances, but after finding respectable employment in the Centenary Collegiate Institute, she was intent on improving her situation. The defence, however, tried to paint a very different picture. They described a young woman who portrayed very low social and moral standards and who they believed had previously worked as a prostitute. They even produced witnesses who confirmed this. The trial lasted for nearly a month and James Titus did not testify in his own defence. Many thought this to be a sign that he was indeed guilty. When the jury returned to deliver their verdict, they too considered him to be guilty. Before his sentence was passed, the judge asked him if he had anything to say, to which Mr James Titus responded that he was innocent and had not committed the crime for which he had been convicted. The judge then sentenced him to death. The sentence was appealed and it seemed that there were those who believed him to be not guilty. The newspapers had been very hostile towards him on their reporting of the case and apart from Harry Herring and Charles Munich, the police had not seriously investigated anyone else. On the night that Miss Smith was murdered, she had spoken to Frank Weedy, who she had previously courted and it was believed that he still had feelings for her. He had been seen with a young man named Jesse Baggetts but the police had never considered either of them to have been suspects in the crime. Before his execution dates, James Titus confessed to the murder of Tilly Smith. He claimed that they had been conducting an improper relationship for some time and that they had been intimate again on the night of the 8th of April. After she had returned from the night out with her friends, he said that she then announced that she believed that she was with child and that he was the father. This was followed by an argument in which he became so enraged he strangled her. Following his confession, his sentence was commuted to life in prison. The monument to the memory of Tilly Smith was unveiled on the 24th of November 1887 and sits beside her grave at the Hackettstown Union Cemetery. It was constructed following donations from local and national benefactors. On it is written, she died in defence of her honour. James Titus served 19 years for the murder and was released on the 27th of December 1904. Sadly, his wife had died in the November of the same year. He carried on living in Hackettstown until the 18th of June 1952, when he died at the age of 95. He was then buried in the Union Cemetery, the same cemetery where Miss Tilly Smith had been laid to rest 66 years earlier. Many people believe that James Titus only made his confession to save himself from the gallows and was in fact innocent of the crime for which he was found guilty. After his release, he never spoke about the case again. It is said that Tilly's ghost still walked through the college. There have been apparent sightings in the grounds, the halls and the theatre. Mr James Titus is the man who according to history murdered Miss Tilly Smith, but there is still much doubt about whether he actually did commit the horrible crime. We will probably never know for certain what actually happened on the night of the 8th of April 1886, or if justice was truly served. Hello everyone, and thank you so much for listening. As usual, please leave any comments or feedback you may have, and I hope to see you all again in the next brief 
Case.